sobbing when they get, um, you're fine. What they do is they get, um, co-workers to the store. So they start this list of, um, kind of defacing everything that you do. Um, you lose respect from a lot of your co-workers. Then your co-workers start attacking you. And then they become witnesses. And what essentially happened to me was, I was called in by the city attorney's office for misconduct. But they never told me what the misconduct was. I was not allowed to have an attorney. I was not allowed to have the union represent me. I was told if I was to investigate it, I would be terminated. When I went to, the, I was threatened by them over and over with letters. So when I finally met with the investigation service, I asked them what my misconduct was. They said they didn't know yet. And once they got it together, they would let me know. Second meeting still didn't get it. So essentially what happened was the investigation report was more or less illegal because no staff attorney signed it. And I was terminated based on that investigative report by their investigation. So I, I had no chance. What was your title again? Then were we I was an eligibility worker for foster care. Oh, I was also a whistleblower. That's probably didn't help me because um, San Francisco they don't honor the whistleblowers here. But they, you should have protective activity under the labor code, but they don't honor that code at all. So I didn't get any protective data, um, service by uh, human resources. So, yeah, very unfair the way. They do. Did you talk on the at the hearing on today? No. And, uh, I was busy writing <laughs> complaints. So right now I'm working with um, Tadella's office and making sure that, um, that the employees all in um, the city, that they do get their two-hour leave, because that's important, and that the posters go up. Because they're not letting it in the place. So I have another letter I'm going to be sending out to them. They say, go ahead and file the complaint. Do you want to get so why are you here, Cheryl? Well, my name is Cheryl Thornton. No, go ahead. And uh, I work with the Department of Public Health in District 10. And uh, in um, May, April of this year, I was removed from my job. Um, I, the reason I, they first gave me, they cited it was because of realignment and duplicity of duties. But then they went on to say, they came back after I had a meet and confer, and they um, retaliated by giving me a whole bunch of anonymous statements. And I never had a fair process in investigation, my due process. It seems like there's a, a, a system of apartheid that exists for black workers. There's two different processes. One, for people who are, who, who are of the dominant culture, who they have white privilege and reap the benefits of the city and county, and the other workers that look like me, who are harassed, retaliated, bullied out of their job, for advocating for the community. And I worked at Patrol Hill for 28 years. I did a good job. When they reassigned me, I asked for a, a performance appraisal up until the last day of work. They said I was a hard worker, I was good in the community, For the I advocated for the youth, and yet they took me out. This is part of the plan, planned gentrification they have that speaks up for the community. Anybody that stands up for the community is targeted, harassed, and bullied. Anybody that looks like me that speaks up is targeted, harassed, and bullied. And uh, this is not the first time. The employment practices, uh, the Department of Public Health, actually the city and county of San Francisco, again, they are very, um, they are very adverse to okay, African American workers. We're going to start with the press conference. Uh, we have got different speakers. Uh, so, uh, my name is. Uh, my, my name is uh, Steve Zeltzer, C-E-L-T-Z-E-R, uh, United Public Workers for Action. Uh, on Wednesday, September the 19th, a historic hearing was held in the city and county of San Francisco of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, the Audit Committee. It was the first hearing in the history of San Francisco on the issue of systemic racism and discrimination in the city and county of San Francisco. There's never been a hearing like that in the city and county of San Francisco. And the reason that that hearing took place is that 
many, many city workers, African American and other city workers, have been illegally retaliated against and discriminated against. And they've been bullied, they've been harassed, and they've been uh, terrorized. And uh, we, the United Pet Workers for Action, and, and the unions are beginning to speak out and say enough is enough. 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 And what has happened in the city and county of San Francisco is that the people who are supposed to be in charge of uh, oversight of uh, carrying out the laws and rules and regulations are actually themselves violating the rules and regulations. And, and that we're talking about Mickey Callahan, we're talking about Barbara, the late, or the former director of the Department of Public Health, Barbara Garcia, who admitted that she knew about discrimination and she didn't do anything about it. Historic discrimination. So the city and county of San Francisco have spent over seventy million dollars on, on settlements uh, to workers who are illegally discriminated against, and to, to law firms to fight city workers who have been illegally discriminated against and retaliated. And when you think about that, seventy million dollars—that's a lot of money fighting workers who've been illegally retaliated against. And not only do they spend all this money, but also. These same executives, like in Lakota Honda, that illegally fired two doctors, Dr. Rivera and Dr. Kerr, uh, they, these executive CEOs still have their jobs, and in many cases, they're promoted. Unreal. So what kind of system do we have where the people who violate the laws, discriminate, uh, terrorize workers, themselves get promoted, and they're not held accountable? Right. So this hearing that we're talking about, it's not just about the racist uh, practices, the terrorism against uh, workers, African-American, Chinese, and others. We're talking about accountability. Who's accountable? Who's accountable? We're talking about not only Mickey Callahan, but uh, uh, Herrera, Dennis Herrera, the city attorney, who knows that these cases uh, are, are false, who knows that people have been illegally discriminated. In fact, in his own office, he's paid a lot of money to lawyers who've been fired illegally for exposing fraud, and we're going to talk about that. So our first speaker is Cheryl Thornton. Cheryl is a uh, community health care worker at the Patrol uh, Hill Neighborhood Health Center, and she's been fighting for the community and has been a whistleblower at that center for many, many years, and she took up a fight, and she was illegally removed from her job, and she's still fighting for her job back. Last point, the San Francisco Labor Council has called for the return of Cheryl Thornton to her job at the Patrol Health Center. Welcome, Cheryl. Hi, thank you, Steve. Yes, my name is Cheryl Thornton, and I've worked at the Patrol Health Center for 28 years. And recently, out of nowhere, and because of my union activity and filing legal actions, I was removed from my job. I was told at first I was removed from my work site that I worked in for 28 years because. Uh, because uh, there was a realignment and duplicity of duties. Well, my union didn't buy that. So they filed a grievance. We had a meet and confer, and we found out. Then they came up with some anonymous unsigned letters. Well, I'm here to tell you, on my last day of work, I asked for a performance appraisal up until the last day I was there, and I had a excellent performance appraisal. There was no mention of intimidation and retaliation. This wasn't until I challenged the system right. that they came after me. I'm telling you, this is not the first time that this has happened to me. This is the third time. I went to HR. I went to Ron Weigel in HR. I went to Mickey Callahan, and no results happened. I had to hire an attorney right. to help me. And so I'm just here to tell you these employment practices are unfair and illegal, and it actually feels like we're under a system of apartheid. Two separate systems for black workers and white workers. They're, they benefit from white supremacy, and we benefit from all the harm that's given, and we have to leave our jobs and lose our livelihoods, and, and it impacts our families. So I wanted to stop, and I want City Hall to hold the perpetrators accountable yes, for yes. what they did to me. Yes. I didn't deserve that. I am a hard worker and I was here for the community. And thank God Brenda and other people, Brenda Bells, yes, came to yes. my rescue All to right. support me because Work. I don't know what I would have done. Work. So thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you.
there. Yeah. So this, this this is endemic. It's in, in many different departments, and uh, including uh, the city attorney's office, who is supposed to represent the city and county of San Francisco. And we have with us the city attorney, Demi Marcel, who was also retaliated for exposing uh, some very serious financial issues in the department. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you. Hi, Debbie. I probably sound like I'm working for the city attorney's office. I was a paralegal for the Department of Justice, uh, federal U.S. Trustee's office. What they have done, and I've done the studies of, of how they're approaching a lot of the discrimination, it's just, it's also the older seniors. We've lost a lot of our senior employees because of the harassment. They force them to leave. They, get, they start um, writing them up, false information on that. What it comes down to, what they're doing, is considered psychoterrorism, like that term. Or it's called, they do mobbing, is what they do. So they get co-workers who actually come in and they um, they degrade you, they spread gossip. Um, it's, it's deplorable, it's really hard to survive in that kind of environment when you have co-workers that are whispering behind your back. I didn't understand what was going on fully, so I would go in every day, work, not talk to anyone, and isolate myself. That's no way to work, you know, especially in this job. And I had a supervisor who was all, who was just as as mean as she could have been. I hate to say that, but that's what it is. She wouldn't help me. She would write me up. And then when I'd ask, um, well, where's my faults? Why are you writing me up? They would turn around and say, well, that's none of your business because they couldn't provide it. But what they do is they're using these coworkers to mob against you. What they do is they turn around and give testimony to the city attorney's office, which is not under oath, not present by any union representative or any attorney. They just give all false testimony that, that they can give. And a lot of it is very damaging because what they claim is that I'm a dangerous woman. I'm, I'm 49. <laughs> Most of the workers are, are five, five feet. That's all for me. And almost six feet. There's no way I can harm them. I don't talk to them. They use intimidation very, very. And what happened was I got called into the city attorney's office, claiming that, um, and the even, and by Mickey Callahan as well, that I was, I had uh, examples of misconduct brought against me. But when I met with the city attorney's investigative unit, I asked what the misconduct was. They told me that they hadn't found out yet. They hadn't decided. And once they decide, they'll let me know. So I had no idea what they were doing. The second meeting was the same. Well, we have misconduct of you, but we're not sure um, what, what files there are against you. Well, uh, yeah, I was also a whistleblower, showing that uh, the, the Human Service Agency had misappropriated about $100,000. They were um, asking the biological parents of the foster children for their financials, which you can't do. There's a Fourth Amendment in violation. We were not allowed to pay the adoption parent if their child was put into um, into a, a group home, which was incorrect. So that we got corrected. But most of what they were doing was harming the children, making sure they were getting the Medi-Cal coverage that they need for foster care. And that's wrong, all for the purpose of trying to show how inept you are. As it turned out, on right after Christmas, I got a big present showing that the the city attorney's office and HR were going to fire me. Oh. I had 10 days to provide a rebuttal. You have to remember, because of the way the city attorney's office handled, there's no due process. They threaten you constantly with letters. You can't get an attorney to represent you, so you end up having to re represent yourself, which is wrong. You should have the ability to get to get representation, even union within that union. Eventually, um, a Skelly hearing was held, which was incorrect because I was told that I couldn't file any grievances. If I filed a grievance with the union as a shop steward, I would be fired. So that's, that's not helpful at all, especially if you have grievances against yourself that you want to file. In the long run, when I started reading all these testimonies of these mobbing co-workers, they had all claimed that I was dangerous, even though there was no evidence there. They were frightened that I could come in and kill them which is also very false information. So, well, they, they have testimony evidence, and that's wrong, especially when there's there's nothing there. 
So I was initially fired because of the misconduct and the false information that was provided. So this is wrong, very wrong for all the employees of that. We need to be this government more transparent. We need to make Dennis Herrero more transparent on the things that he does and Mickey Callahan. And all the management system uses this mobbing technique to go after us. So I'm not leaving anywhere. Tomorrow um, I'm going to be working again, giving you a complaint with a Dennis Herrera, or uh, actually Secretary of State Padilla, because I wrote a complaint to them, letting them know that the employees were not getting their two-hour um, paid leave to go vote, which they're allowed to do. And they were even telling employees that you had to get a uh, vacation or floating time on to go to vote, which is totally illegal, and they weren't even posting that information for the employees to know about this. I also filed a complaint with Cal OSHA. 170 Otis had had mold all over their spigots for the water coolers. It was disgusting. And um, I was retaliated for that, too. So there's a number of things that went on that I just was not allowed to. So I'm here to fight for you guys, even though I don't work anymore. <laughs> I'm still going to um, file complaints with the Labor Commission. They told me I didn't have a, a foot to stand on, but I'm still going to file. Same with the Department of Justice, same with the Secretary of State. I won't give up. So here's to all of you. <laughs> all right. Enough is enough. Enough, enough is enough. 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 Right. Okay, I, I want to say one thing is the latest that I got from Mickey Callahan. I've been attending to the Civil Service Commission meeting for the last three years. Every month, I go for public uh, comment at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on my own time off. Uh, I have uh, I have posted this issue to them for three years, and they they just say that I complained. So when I get back to work, uh, I get retaliated against, and I'm the next one out the door. But I can tell you, this is what the latest what Mickey Kelly has said. Uh, so amazing that how she can be on the panel on the Civil Service Commission when she's also in HR. That's right. So they only listen to her. They don't. Right. The whole panel don't listen to any one of us. That's right. The That's latest right. she said that she's going to not allow the union activity at work. You cannot talk to your own member, the shop steward or the officer, to talk to the membership. To, to, uh, they're not allowed to do that. They're not allowed to use the, the work time or to be doing that. So she's trying to get uh, the union people all in trouble. Retaliation. Yes. Stop, 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 yeah, stop union busting. That's what she was doing. Stop union busting. Stop union busting. Enough. 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 And I filed a sexual harassment lawsuit. I was sexually harassed for seven years. Nothing was done. Finally, I filed the lawsuit. I met with HR upstairs, two young ladies, and they have a, had a one on one with me. It was actually two of them, and one of them did myself. They deemed that I was sexually harassed for four and a half years. It really went on for about seven years. The person that sexually harassed me was known as a sexual harassed person. He wasn't able to go into the building. So ever since that time, I'm a 23-year veteran with the city and county. Ever since I did that, now I'm deemed as a violent person. Yeah. And, and fear, my right? co-workers, basically, I could be in a hallway with a co-worker, and he could say I'm threatening him. And they'll investigate him. They won't get any type of camera footage. They won't get any kind of information from anybody else, just him, and, and go ahead and put up allegations for termination. Presently, I have a Scully hearing next week for my termination. Again, I'm an excellent employee. I come to work. I do my work. I don't harass anyone. I keep to myself. But as Debbie was saying, what ends up happening is you have to isolate yourself because your coworkers are trying to lie about your situation as far as you Set being you intimidating and being harassing towards them when actually it's the other way around. So that's my story. I hope I get to keep my job. I love the city. I love working with city and county. But this harassment is rampant. It's going on everywhere. And everyone's scared to speak out. That's the problem. That's why we don't have a big showing right here. But this is the start of the showing because I'm getting phone calls, emails, Facebook pages 
everybody's sick and tired of this. Yes. That's right. yes. You know, this is criminal what's going on. That's right. The city That's receives right. federal funds. That's right. It's a harassment free workplace. That's right. That's what they get the federal funds when they got right. have to comply and they don't. That's right. Exactly. And it's against the law. That's we need right. to stand up and fight. Yes. Discrimination has no place in, in the city and county of Stop the discrimination court. now. Stop, Stop the discrimination, discrimination now. now. Stop the discrimination now. Stop the discrimination now. Callahan has to go. 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 Part of this issue also is privatization. Uh, they want, the city wants to privatize the community health care centers. They want to privatize uh, foster care. They want to privatize all these agencies and give control them to their cronies, to their friends, to nonprofits. And this is really what it's about. Business union busting is what it's about. Because if they give it to their cronies, then there's less protection for the workers, there's less services, and less oversight. And that's why we have to, to organize the fight against privatization. So our next speaker is Brenda Barros. And Brenda is the uh, chair of the San Francisco SAU 1021 General Hospital chapter and been leading the fight for many years against uh, workplace bullying and harassment of city workers. Welcome, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Hi. Thank you. Um, I want to send a message to everybody listening that although we had that historical meeting at City Hall where finally some of us were heard, and that was just a, you know a drop in the bucket compared to how many people really are that Say out that. there. That. It doesn't account those people that are afraid of retaliation. So the reason I wanted to come today is we got a nice letter from Ron Weigold on email about how he was going to work with SEIU 1021 and all that. That's all well and good, but the retaliation has already begun. There were, the guy's statement I read, read the next day, his supervisor called him into the office. Now, now keep in mind, the rally was the 18th of September. 19th. 19th. They had an evaluation dated June 2018. And the guy came in the day after the rally and gave him an unsatisfactory evaluation. This guy is trying to cover his butt because he know he did wrong. And so that is pure retaliation. That's right. My boss has been getting phone calls from HR. So they're going to start harassing all of us who speak up. Uh, I'm here to say that I've been with the city almost 40 years. Right? They're not going to scare me away. Say that! They're not Say that! Shut me Say up. that again, though! I will never shut up. Never shut up! Because they cannot continue to treat people this way. That's right. And, I, and I made an oath before I leave and retire that I'm going to do something to make it better for the people that are still here when Say I leave. Say and that. the new ones before they get here. There you go. They cannot continue to treat black employees like this. That's right. And it's not personal with me, right? Some of these people, I like them as yep. individuals. But if you're not doing right, you're not doing right. And go. so everybody has to be held accountable. I have to be held accountable. We all do. That's right. For our behaviors. That's right. And so I, I hope we build a culture in the Department of Public Health and throughout the city and every department where people are treated with respect, where fairness is the rule yes. right now instead of the exception like right. it is right now. Yes. It's exceptional and it should not be that way when That's people right. are treated fairly, when people get promotions like they should. And, and I think that the color of the city needs to change. The workforce needs to change. Black people got pushed out of San Francisco. On purpose. Nikki Callahan really upset me when she was reading her statement. She talked about the number of people that live in San Francisco that are black versus the number of employees that are black. Yeah. 
But she didn't talk about the fact that the reason a lot of blacks don't live in San Francisco is because they're no longer hiring them in these good paying city jobs. You, the most of the ones that are working are not in the high paid job. The higher the pay is, the less likely you are to see somebody who is black. And the few blacks that make it into there, they're terrified too. That's right. They almost. It's sad that when you see other black people rep repress their own people right. out of fear and trying to hold on to a check. That's right. That's right. And that's that should right. not be. That's so right. I don't think it's okay for anybody to be in that fear every day when you come to work. And it doesn't matter to me how high you are, because I care about my brothers and sisters in them high paid jobs too. Because I know what they must be going through. If we're going through this with what we make, I know what they must be going through. So I say to the black folks, you got to have a little sympathy for those folks. Sometimes they may seem like they're not doing what they're supposed to do, but there might be a reason. But we have come to support with them. Us. Come stand with us. They need to come, come out. Come stand and with us. To stand come stand with us. With us. They need to come out and they need to stand with That's us. That's right. They need to stop being afraid. Yep. So the more of us that start coming out, the less people that will be afraid and the more progress we will make. Now we're going to sit down and work with the city and try to come up with some plans on how we're going to make this good. But we want to send a message to the city. We ain't playing. That's right. If, if, if I see any indication when I'm sitting in a room that somebody's trying to play some games, we're going back to the streets. What? So I just what? want to make that message clear. What? Yes. What I say? Back to the streets. That's right. What it say? Let the dominoes fall, baby. Let them fall. Nobody playing. Hi, my Um, after that, been trying to get a job with the um, with the city and county of San Francisco, and I even made a complaint to Brenda Lim down the street. Um, his name was written on my paper along with uh, Luana Cam. I hope I'm saying her uh, her name right. Along with uh, Linda Simon, uh, with Mickey's Callahan signature on the end saying there's no discrimination. Yeah. Filed across the street. Uh, around September 2016, just sent me a letter last month, two years later, saying they don't have no discrimination. Um, I have 30 days to um, appeal that, and I will be putting in uh, my appeal next week, but I just find it just so discouraging. I even was going to move away from San Francisco because of this, but I decided to stay. And I'm going to stay for this fight, and I will be at every meeting. You will see my <laughs> black face, my brown That's face right. here. Stand Free. in solidarity right. with everybody. That's right. So uh, we've just begun this fight, and uh, workers are coming forward, and they think they can hide, but they're not going to be able to hide, because we're after them. We're after them because they have to be held accountable. And the people of San Francisco, uh, it's not just about African Americans, it's about human rights for everyone. Because when you stand up for human rights for one person, you're standing up for all people. And people have a right to live in a... In a, in a space, in a workspace where they can do their work without being harassed, without being bullied, without being terrorized and discriminated against. Why is it in the city and county of San Francisco, people have to go off on disability because of stress all the yeah. time? Yeah. There was one uh, person at the hearing who said that 50% of the workers were out on stress because of harassment and bullying. I mean, this is this is unacceptable, and, and it's costing the city millions, and it's destroying lives. Because when you go out on disability because of workplace harassment, your life has been affected. Your mental health, your children, your family. We're talking about a, a really a vicious attack. It's inhuman what they're putting people through. And if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, uh, the homeless in San Francisco, and yeah, many of these homeless workers are disabled workers who've been harassed and bullied on the job. Right. I mean, veterans. And, I mean, the stress that the working people face in this country is unbelievable. And it's growing, and it has to stop. And one of the things that we're demanding is that all these workers who've been illegally uh, discharged, illegally harassed and bullied, they have to be put back on the job. Yeah. We're saying yeah. that it's not enough to take a financial settlement. People have a right to work. Yes. People have a right to do their job. And yes. if they go back to work, that is better for everyone at that job. Yes. Because what these managers want is they want people to leave.
disappear and they can continue business as usual. Yes, yes. And what we're saying is no more business as usual. Yes. We, we are going to fight to defend all city workers. We're going to fight against racist discrimination. We're going to fight against workplace bullying. And also we're going to fight to make these managers and executives accountable. It is a scandal. It is a scandal that San Francisco has spent $70 million on settlements and uh, legal costs. I mean, what in the hell is going on? And they tell the city workers there's no money? Right. And they spend $70 million on, on settlements? We know. We know where the money is going. And it's not going for the frontline workers. It's going for settlements. It's going for consultants. It's going for executives making two, three dollars $300,000 a year. They always have money for more executives. Yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, and the harassment, the effort, the effort to privatize the pharmacy at General Hospital, the effort to privatize all kinds of city services. At the hearing that was held on the 19th, they talked about these special business districts. And what they're doing is they, they've got business people running a tax districts with non-union workers, and they're harassing poor people, they're harassing minorities, using tax dollars. So these special business districts, well, they're taking care of parks, they're taking care of public parks. Public parks should be taking care of city workers. Why are they hiring private workers to take care of public parks? Again, it's privatization, it's outsourcing. They don't want civil service. They're also attacking civil service. They don't want civil service because they want to be able to uh, bully people and, and terrorize people so they don't speak up. Civil service was set up in this San Francisco and in other cities to protect public workers. And why do they need do they need protection? Because when they speak out about financial mismanagement, yeah. when they speak out against the illegal activities, the managers try to get rid of them. They don't want to be exposed. Yeah. And this is something we have to organize against. We're going to have forums, and we're going to make this not just an issue for the city workers, but the public, because the public is affected. Yes. When yeah. city workers are bullied and harassed, they cannot provide the services that the public needs. Yes. That's why you have conscientious city workers, if they do their job in some places, they're in trouble. What right. kind of system is it? If you do your job, you're in trouble. I mean, this is, I mean, this is, this is upside down. This is upside down. I mean, conscientious city workers try to do their job, and they get in right. trouble. Right. And the people they're putting in trouble are not doing their job. That's why it's happening. They're, not, they're violating the laws. They're violating the rules. And we're telling Mickey Callahan, we want another hearing. Yes. And we want these supervisors and executives questioned personally about what they've done because they've personally been involved in corruption. They've personally been involved in, in discrimination. And they know that there's been discrimination. And courts have ruled that there's discrimination. And yet these managers that do it are still on the job. They're yeah. not held accountable. They get promoted. They get, they get promoted. Yeah. We need a list of all the uh, managers who've been promoted after illegal activity, yeah. and we've got to put put them wanted page. Why do you get promoted for illegally violating the law? There Why you do you get promoted yeah. for discrimination? Yeah. Hold the perpetrators accountable. That's right. Hold them to, hold them to accountable. Hold them, them accountable. Hold 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 them accountable. So we're going to be back. We're going to continue this fight. We're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. We're not going. We're not going away. And and we are going to continue this fight. All right.